Hi everyone, bonjour to <laughs> tutti. Uh, so my name is Fanny and this is Gera. And as you can see today, we are both uh, expert scientists and we are going to do some experimentation and some live coding about accessibility. But first, oh, let me check. Yeah. It's okay. First, let me share with you a defi definition we have about accessibility. For us, accessibility is wide, wider than we, we think. Uh, it's about making an app usable everywhere, whatever if you live in the middle of Paris, if you are in the middle of nowhere in India, if you have no data connection in the subway. It's also about making an app uh, available in every situation, whatever the phone you have, whatever if you're using your phone in your bed uh, in the dark, or if you're using a laptop uh, on a sunny day outside. And of course, by everyone, uh, if you're disabled or not. And of course, today we are going to focus on disability because it, it is the, um, the, the part of the sentence that where there is still a lot of um, unfair stuff, a lot of uh, people uh, with handicap that cannot access digital uh, stuff. So we think we have to work on this part of accessibility. So disability, there is four types of disability. Uh, first, motor disability. Auditory disability, cognitive disability. I want to just make a short definition for this category because I think it's maybe the less known. Uh, so this kind of disability concern people with mental illness, like Alzheimer's disease, but also autism, uh, depression, and, and so on. And even when, when you took some drugs or alcohol, you might also experience the same difficulty that this category. That doesn't mean test uh, drunk, <laughs> no. Uh, and the last uh, category is visual uh, accessibility, visual uh, impairment. And today we are going to focus on this uh, last uh, last uh, category because we think as a developer that it's a category on which we can have a biggest impact. Let me explain you why. Uh, we think that uh, we think we know that when you we develop something to make it accessible for screen reader, for someone who's blind. Behind that, the API that we are going to be used is the same API used by the tool uh, used for people with motor disability. Uh, for example, when you, are, you need a, um, um, a clicker, when you have a, a motor disability, you will use switch access on Android and behind the same API than the API for tollback. So if we work on visual disability, we will have an impact on motor disability. About auditory disability, if I summarize, the, the most important thing to do for this category is when you have audio uh, media or video media in your app, well, the, the thing is that you have to add uh, subtitles or transcription. And as a developer, we can, it's, it's not our responsibility to, to do that. And about cognitive disability, actually, a lot of best practice uh, for cognitive disabilities are UI and UX best practice. So it's just before reaching us uh, developer. So let's focus on visual disability. And I want to share with you the most frequent disability because we might have uh, heard uh, some of them, but we don't know really what they are. So the most popular is color blindness. Uh, a lot of men are, are, um, have these disabilities. I think it's like 10%. And I know we are in Italy, so a lot of you like football, right? So if you were colorblind in 2013 and you were watching the League One, you were not able probably to see uh, the balloon because for someone who is colorblind, actually a green glass, a green grass appears to be orange. So for the whole year, they couldn't change the balloon, so it was not a good season for colorblind people, but actually they, they changed the balloon the next year. So. The second most frequent uh, visual impairment, Laurence told us uh, about this uh, impairment yesterday, it's retinitis pigmentosa. You can get this, uh, this, uh, this disease uh, from between 10 and, and 30, year, 30 years old. And 
what is the impact of your vision? Well, you, your, your vision will shrink little by little, and it leads to blindness. Another uh, really uh, known uh, disability uh, impairment is glaucoma. You might have heard about it. You can get glaucoma starting from 40 years old, uh, and uh, yeah, and it does the same thing that retinitis pigmentosa. Your, your field of vision will reduce progressively, and if it's not taken in care, uh, you can get, uh, you can become blind too. And uh, the last most frequent visual impairment is uh, age-related macular degeneration. You can get this disease started from 50, and when you're six, uh, 70, 75 years old, you have 20% of chance to get this disease. And it's quite the opposite than uh, uh, glaucoma or retinitis pigmentosa. You will lose progressively the central vision. Some statistics, uh, there is uh, 1.6 million people uh, in Italy that are visually impaired. Among uh, them, there is more than 200,000 blind uh, persons. So that's a lot of people. So today, I told you we we're going to do some experimentation. We have some uh, glasses here uh, to experiment the, those different kinds of uh, visual impairment. But of course, we want you to still listening to you to us during the talk. So if you want to try the glasses, please come at the end of the talk. And now Gerard is going to present us our work tollback because it's our first, uh, first thing we have to know as developer. Thanks, Manny. One, two. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, before to start, uh, who are already using tollback here? Wow, okay. Not at all, not a lot. Okay, so it will be useful. Up. So let's start. Uh, quick tips before, um, if you want to activate, deactivate tollback uh, easier, uh, you can just pull up, pull uh, at the same time the volume up and down. And so it will activate, deactivate it. Uh, it's avoid to go to the settings and find the right uh, setting for that, etc. So my tollback is activated. And here I have um, an application named Deezer. It is a French Spotify uh, in France. And so uh, tollback stay at the first focusable element. So here it is welcome, sign up for free, or login. And the first gesture with tollback is the swipe right or left to move to the next focusable element or the previous one. So I make a swipe to right and go to the next focusable element. And so here it is the edit text. And so tollback will say edit box, email address, double tap to edit text. So tollback know that this element is an edit text and he know how I can interact with it. So I just need to make a double tap. I make another swipe uh, to right and go to the next element, so here a button, to log in with uh, Google. So tollback will say log in with Google, double type to activate it. And so now I can just double tap and uh, I will log in with Google. So I log in, blah, blah, blah. I have all stuff uh, by Google. And so I go to the next screen. And at the next screen, uh, tollback will play a little song just to notify me that I go to the new screen. So I can explore it. Uh, it is, uh, I, yeah. Uh, and so I go to the, well, yes, the first focusable element, so here, music. And so, yeah, I can explore this, uh, this screen with a single tap or a drag uh, on the screen. Um, this is useful when the, the, the user is not totally blind. So he can see, but he used tollback to have some help uh, in the to use the application, so you can find uh, you can find uh, quickly the, the 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 item interest. So here the podcast items at the bottom, and so tollback will say podcast tab two or five double tab to select. So tollback know that is a bottom navigation. There is five types, and I am on the second one. And so I go uh, on the on this uh, this focusable element with a single type, and so uh, tollback say made for you heading. 
So you know that this focusable element is a header, and I can navigate uh, with a swipe up or down uh, with uh, by uh, by title. To do that, I need to enter in the configuration menu of Tollback. Uh, and so I can configure the swipe up and down to navigate to the next characters, not next words, or next heading, etc. So me, I select the heading one. And so now when I make a new swipe down, I go to the next heading, and it will say playlist, you will love heading. Great. Uh, quick tips. Uh, we'll use it during the during a demo after. Uh, if you don't want don't want to have tollback, uh, which say everything, uh, because you don't want to be disturbed or your colleague. Uh, and uh, I can say that colleague don't like to have tollback uh, at the uh, uh, with you. So you can deactivate the sound of tollback and activate subtitle at the bottom of the screen. So you need to go to the settings, system, accessibility, tollback, settings, advanced settings, developer settings, and display speech output. It is a nightmare to find it, but it exists, <laughs> so you can use it. And we have an experimentation, Fanny, yeah, no? We told you that we were going to do some experimentation, so now we need a volunteer, the, the part of the talk where you all do that. We, we need a volunteer to come up on stage. We developed actually a small shopping app, which is... Yeah, as you might think, not accessible. And we, we need someone to come on stage. Oh, can you hide the screen? Uh, yeah. uh, to test our application. And the, the, the goal of this person is just to add five boxes of spaghetti in the basket. Any this volunteer? One. Yeah, me, me, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. So come, uh, come here, yeah, please. Yeah. You, you will be the lucky one to, to wear uh, that, is, if you're OK. Yeah, yeah. Blind, blind people now. <laughs> okay. Can you see? No. OK. okay. <coughs> Don't worry, we, we are here. OK, I'm here. You will see the application, but of course, him no. OK. So Gerard is going to. Hold you a phone just here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I you hope you listen to me. Are you familiar with Tollback? What? Are you familiar with Tollback? Have you already? Okay, let's try. <laughs> so here you are on the top element of our application, the top, and you can navigate. Okay. Total silence, image, window system, UI. No, it can't. Media output. 57% accessibility, slider, window media volume control, okay. app logo, image, window 11, Y shopping app, music volume set to 96%. So if you want, Tri -color I, can, Rotini 12 yeah. ounces, good and gather, I can help you with the gesture. Can I take your finger? Yes. You can do like this. 99. Okay, okay. sorry. Putting your finger back. App here. logo, image, and you product swipe. image, image, oh. in list. You have a big finger, so you. <laughs> <laughs> app logo, you image, swipe product list. Like this. Serials. Okay. And you will go image, to the image, next element. List. You know? App logo, okay. Im okay. product image, image, in list. Uh, I, I have to take uh, spaghetti. Spaghetti, yeah. yes. Barilla Didolini Costa, 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. Barilla Didolini Costa, 16 ounces. Okay. Five, zero fifths. Product image, Im Barilla Spaghetti, one pound. Five, zero fifths. Button, Ooh. detected, text, plus. Double tap to activate. <laughs> no. How many? How many barilla pasta? <laughs> okay, now I have to buy it, maybe. Yeah, you, you have only one. I have Probably. One. I have you have to add five. five. One. Barilla spaghetti, one pound. If I may help you, yes. you are on the title here, and you can swipe five, zero to move fifth. to the next element. Four swipe. twenty-six. Okay. Ninety-nine. Swipe. Two. There are many elements. Yeah, this many one. elements. Two. <laughs> Product yes. image, image. Oh, I put, yeah. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. Button. Detected. Text you can plus. See. Double tap to activate. But detected. Text. Product image. Image. Ah, Button. Okay. Oh. Detected. Text. Plus. Double tap. I think you can see. I see something. <laughs> <laughs> are you Gorilla think, spaghetti, one pound. Do you think you're done? 
Not sure. Hero. You want to you want to look? Ninety nine. <laughs> you want to have a look? A, a bit. Yes. A sneaky peek. Okay, please, please do. Anyway, <laughs> the the. <laughs> <laughs> the experimentation is over. You can you remove want. the mask. Yeah, anyway, it's it's meant to be difficult. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you can remove and can just that? yeah, <laughs> you can have a look. Ah. You was al almost there. You had four. Also this is yeah. 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 Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, it's me. Yeah. So it was a little bit difficult for some good reason because he don't know really well how to use tollbacks. So fortunately, uh, blind people know how to use that, this tool. But there is some issue, accessibility issue with this application. Uh, the first one is the product image. When the focus is on the product, is on the image of the product, it will say product image. This may be not the best experience. We don't have any alternative text for the add to basket uh, image button. So, and the same thing for the remove one. So we can improve that. Uh, we have the product rating and the product price. It is very hard to know which is, which is the, what is the pro the price and the rate, uh, of the product. We have a lot of swipe to do to go to the next element. So uh, we need to be more slower, uh, smaller, sorry. The fab at the bottom, so he didn't try to, to find it, but if you try to find the bottom, the fab bottom at the bottom of the screen, it is unreachable. You cannot access to it. And finally, uh, there is no feedback when the user changed the quantity of the product. And it is a little bit, it is a, uh, an issue, a high issue because you want to know how many products you buy, uh, in a shopping app. So let's start with the product image and the icon button. Okay, so uh, I think in your Jones, the, the most thing, the, the most popular thing you know about accessibility is content description. Raise your hand if you know content description. Okay, so it's good, but how to write good content description? Here, product image, of course it's a product image, but it doesn't help the user. So some tips. When do we need first to add a content description? Well, when an image share uh, an information, like um, when uh, on Twitter you're sharing a photograph or some something on Twitter, you should have a content add a content description on Twitter. And here on the product image, we should have some some contents. And uh, of course, uh, the the most important thing is when you have image button in your app, because if you don't have content description, your action is not accessible at all. So how to write a good content description? First thing is that you have to describe the information. Okay, let's try it. Let's write, you cannot see it, but image of a blue parilla box. It's written spaghetti and 16 holes, no GMO product, verified logo at the bottom of the box, photo of the fork with a delicious spaghetti, Italian spaghetti, tomato sauce and basil image. Okay, what's wrong here? Too long, yes. <laughs> you spoiled it. <laughs> First thing is we say image of. And actually, it's not necessary to have this information. This is a photo, this is an image, because Tallback will say it at the end. So we can remove that. And of course, be brief. We have to share really the information that matters. And here, maybe the information, the package are important, but we can have them on a detailed product page. At this stage, the person just wants to go quick and have the, the information about what is this product. And okay, we can, we can uh, simplify and say 16 host barilla spaghetti. But then if I use the swipe right uh, in our app, we will move to barilla spaghetti again. So the last advice, just don't repeat the information. And in this situation, actually, we are going to ignore the, the image because the information is in the text and maybe we can improve the text here, the label of the product in, instead of adding a, a content description. So here we said content description null and tallback will ignore the, the, the element, will not focus at all on this element. 
And of course, last advice about images is do not add content description on decorative images. Decorative images are things like a uh, background image, a logo of your applications, things that doesn't that are just here to be pretty. Don't say that to designers, but yeah. Let's cool. fix it. Yes, we will fix this. So I am here on the code of the application. You can see my screen at the this mobile screen at the right. And we have some composable uh, with Compose. It's okay. Um, so here yeah, I I go first to the product list uh, composable. Uh, this composable is the entire uh, screen of the product list. So I found the scaffold, the top up bar, the content, etc. And so you can find, you can see. Yes, you can see. Uh, I will mask this. Yeah. And so I have a lot of things here, and one important thing here. It's the app logo information. Uh, like Fanny say, uh, this information is not necessary because it is just don't give any information, uh, useful information. So I can just remove and make uh, give null uh, as value. But here for the settings menu, to go to the settings menu, uh, now I have a content description to null. So when Toolbike will go to the settings icon button, it will just say nothing. And so the blind people cannot access to this. Yeah. So I, I will use uh, prepared strings, okay, which, is, uh, which is here, cd open settings. Uh, up, and these settings will say just open settings uh, information. I have another one here, the cd open basket. It is the same thing I have here, the floating action button to go to the baskets. And so today I have an icon with a shopping cart, but a null has content description, and I just give the information. It is uh, dedicated to open the basket. OK. I go to the product item. So here I have on a single item in my list. And so I have here an ASIC image composable with give the product image information. So I think you know what is the fix. I just give null and it will be ignored and go to the label. Uh, I have some other uh, icon buttons here in the quantity selection uh, composable. So I have the quantity minus, the quantity, and the quantity plus button. So I will use these two uh, content description to give the information, it is dedicated to add the product and uh, remove the product. And so I have here the first icon button dedicated to remove. So I give here CD action remove. And the same thing for the head. Up. Okay. One thing you may have noticed on this button during the demo is that um, actually a tollback was saying plus. Because if you don't provide any content description, under it do like uh, AI to try to recognize what is on the image. So it recognizes there is a plus sign. So in this situation, that was quite OK. And so uh, all you can see here, uh, the first element focusable is, is no more the app logo. It ignores it uh, automatically and go to the title of uh, the screen. Um, and so if I go to the settings menu, it says settings uh, button and try color font hero add button and so it say add button same for the remove remove button here. double cool. tap to activate so we fix the uh, image uh, issue and now we have the product rating and product price which are text so funny i think text is by default accessible not well, this is not. Text are not always accessible. There are some situations where you should uh, care about the accessibility of your text. For example, when the context is implicit by a non-textual element. Here in our app, we have a rate 3.9. Uh, and as a site user, we are able to understand that it is a rating because there are some stars be next to the, to the rate. But if you are blind, you don't have this information, and you cannot understand what is 3.9 and 88. So in this situation, we have to improve the accessibility. 
Another situation is when pronounce, something pronounced out loud differently but it is written. And for example, every time you have a uh, slash, yes. Uh, here, uh, it doesn't say 3.9 uh, uh, on 5. Uh, it said 3.95. And in this situation, we will not say that about a rating. Uh, it's not mathematics. So we have to fix also the accessibility in this scenario. The last scenario uh, we can find in our app is sometimes to match the design from the designer. Uh, we have to split text in different containers. And so in this situation, that's what we have done to have the price look like this. So we have three containers. So Tollback will say two swipe, 79 swipe, euros. It's not possible to understand what is the price. Oh, and there is a last one. You must know that uh, screen reader don't share the information about the decoration of the text. On computer, on iPhone, on Android, it's the same. So if you strike through the, the text, it would not say it to the user. So again, we have to say here, what is the meaning in our app of this strike through text? Here, it's a reduced price, the or original price, actually. So to fix that, we are going to use the modifier.semantics. But what is semantics? You have to know that uh, on Compose, you have the composition tree that describe uh, the architecture, the, the hierarchy of your composable. Well, uh, in parallel, you have another tree called the semantic tree. You have all the same information, the same structure, but not exactly all the information. In the semantic tree, you have information like what is the, the kind of composable? Is it a button? Is How can I interact with it? Uh, what is the content description? And of course, this tree is like the, the tree below. There is no information about the colors and things that are not useful for accessibility. And actually, this tree uh, in Compose is also used uh, by uh, the test framework. So let's try to use this, this uh, modifier. OK. So here, I, need to, I have to bug uh, with this. I have the rating, read, the read-only rating composable. Uh, and so here I have, uh, da, da, da. yeah, uh, these two texts. Uh, one about the rate information, and another one, other, another one uh, for the comments. So I can use these two uh, strings. One dedicated for one for the rating, and other for the comments. And so I will add up the modifier, modifier information. Uh, tech. I use the semantics, and here I can give a content description. So, CD product rating. Okay, I give the same thing for this one. Content description. And so I use the second one so to say uh, it is a comments. Uh, and now for the price, I ha what I have here, I have a composable name price, which contains the original price and the strikeout price, and use the same composable to display it. And so I go to the price text. And so in the price text, uh, I have here a parameter named text decoration. And, and I can use this information, this parameter, to know if the, comp the price text composable is used for a strike code price or not. So to do that, to add the, uh, the content description, I will add here my parameter. And so I had a if condition, and just I checking if my test decoration is equals to line truth. If yes, I use the CD strikeout string. Otherwise, I use the CD price. And so I can run it. Yeah, really fast. And so here, uh, my, of course. Up. Settings. Try color rotini 12 ounces. Good and gather in list. Rated at 5.015. Cool. I have the good information. It is not fifth, but on five. 275 comments. He said it's a comments. Zero, 95 euros. And I have the information about the price. Cool. 
you may realize that Tallback is speaking really fast. Uh, actually, you can you can um, set set up the speed of Tallback, but blind users use it really really fast, and we More are kind of that. used to, so we use it fast also. Yeah. Uh, so the product, rate, the product rating and price information is not is now understandable, so pretty cool. But we still have a lot of swipe to do to go to the next product item. Oh, I can fix that. Well, it's simple. We just have to group elements together to, re to improve the experience here. So let's just have a look here. How many gestures we need to go through one product? First, the title then the rating uh, information, then the price, then the previous price, then the button. That makes five, six, six gestures, I'm not able to count. <laughs> but that's quite a lot just for one product to go to all uh, a list of products that may be long. So we propose you here an improvement, but you also have to test with user. You, you, you can try to do some groupment in your application and test with real user to find out if that makes sense for them or, or not. So here, we say that maybe the rating is not important, so we can group that with the title, so it's say at the end, and then we group the price together, and then we remain the, the button. And to do that, we will use the semantic modifier. The fix is pretty simple. Um, here I am on the price, and so I want to group these two price text. So to do that, I just need to add semantics here and give a value about the merge descendant information. If I set to two, it will say all composable uh, content description composable uh, on the row uh, child. Uh, I do the same thing for uh, for the uh, for the price yeah. item, product item. So here I have a text. Dedicate, dedicate it for the label, and uh, I have my read-only rating uh, information. But I cannot group it easier because it is. If I make, if I had a modifier here on the colon, it will group my text, my read-only rating composable, and my quantity. So to fix that, I just need to group inside another uh, composable. So here another colon. I give my composable here, and I add my modifier, semantics, and merge descendant two. Uh, Top back on. Try color rotini twelve ounces. So here and I group my two, my label and my rating. One, and euros, if I go to price, the price, two, it will say the price, the original price, and the sorry code price if it exists. So if I go here, One, it euros. will just take the original price. Cool. So uh, today we need just free swipe to go to the next element. It is much more easier than the original during the demo. Um, so it is fixed. Cool, but. Oh, I can fix the fab button because, well, I cannot change something, I think. Yeah, it's true. We really like fab button in our app because they help us to catch the, the main action of our screen directly. It's really great when you are a site user. But where you are a blind person, well, actually, you have to know that uh, told back, we've read uh, layers by layers uh, stuff on the screen. So first, it will read the deepest layer, everything from the top to the bottom, and then after we'll move to the upper layer. So every time you're, you're using like scaffold with a fab button or a box, well, it, you, will have any, you, have a, you will have trouble to have this button reachable. And for example, uh, in Gmail, uh, if like me, you have thousands of mail and the list is just infinite, well, a uh, blind user will never reach the, the, the action because Tallback have to go to each email before switching then to the, to the button. That's a huge problem. And actually today uh, on uh, Android uh, with Compose, it's not possible to, in, to, um, to change the reading order. We were able to do that with XML, 
but it, it was okay with Tallback, but if you use like Samsung or other device that have a another layer, it didn't work pretty well. So now with Compose, it's not possible to, to manage the, the order of reading. So one workaround is to actually do like they do in Gmail. You can detect in the code if Tallback is activated. And if so, you can move this button, not move, but put another button like this at another part of the screen. And probably if it's a main action, put it really on the top, like it will be the first or the second or third focused uh, element. So let's see how to do that. OK. We need to be serious there. <laughs> I cannot see anything with this. <laughs> oh, no, I cannot see. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I need to know if Tallback is activated. For that, I can use here something I prepare. This variable, Accessibility Manager, uh, which comes from the Git system service. So it is the it is uh, Android thing, and it's not uh, in Compose. And so I can uh, use this variable to know in my product list. Uh, I have a parameter named is accessibility enabled and I can use it I can check if the accessibility is activated so this is the first parameter and I have another one another boolean to check if tallback is activated so okay I have the information I go here I have my parameter I give to my product list and so here I have my accessibility enabled, which is true if tallback is activated and otherwise false. So I can use it now in my top-up bar and check if accessibility is enabled, I will just add an icon button with on, pass on shopping cart click it and with the shopping cart uh, icon and here the CD open basket information for the content description. And so now, if I test it. Now I have the basket uh, in my top up bar because tallback is activated. Up. Cool, so now the, uh, this primary action because go to the basket is pretty interesting uh, in the shopping app. Uh, it's now uh, reachable, but I don't have any feedback when I add a product or remove uh, the quantity of a product. Yes, and I think it's the, the worst problem we had in the demo. Like, he was thinking I'm adding one pro a product, but I don't know how many. And what you have to know is if the state of your component change, you have to inform the user. Every time, just put it in your mind. If the state change, we have to inform the user. So let's have a look of the different state of our quantity selector component. So there is an initial state. We didn't click it yet, so but Second state, the quantity has evolved. We have to inform the user what is the current quantity. And the last state here on our components is when, uh, when the max quantity is reached. So we have to also inform that the user to the user max working quantity is reached. So to do that, we are going to use a new property, which is called state description. You see, this is the sentence that uh, Tallback said when the button is in the initial state. Say add, double tap to activate. Well, actually, when we will be uh, adding a state de description, the information will be stayed at the beginning of the sentence. So here we can say the state description to one. And one nice thing we can do now with Compose actually is to uh, personalize the action uh, that Tallback will say. Basically, Tallback say double tap to activate for any button. But here we could say double tap to add to basket or even better, double tap to add the barilla pasta to the basket. So let's try that. Yeah. So here I need just to go in my quantity selection composable. So because here I have my two buttons and I have three uh, con uh, uh, content description here, one for the label, uh, two for the label, and one to give the information the max is reached. So okay, I go first on the uh, remove button 
And so here I had my modifier, my semantics. Okay, and so I don't use the content description here because I want to have to react to the change of the state. And so here I can just say, okay, what is the new quantity? Pretty simple. I can also uh, give another information for the click label. So here I have the on click uh, function with here can I can give the label. So it is no, it is action remove. Okay, you need a callback because it will execute this callback instead of this one when I uh, override the on click label information. So here I need to call on remove click click at callback, and I need to reach on true to inform compose to execute this callback. Okay, oh. okay. Um, and so I need to, make, need to make the same thing with this one, but with the head button, I can have the maximum reach. So up the description, and I need to check if the quantity equals the max quantity. If yes, I will combine the quantity and the uh, states max reach. Yes, else. I give just the quantity information and last the on click label with the label action had blah 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 on add click it and return true. Cool. Top back on. Home plus launcher. Eleven Y shopping app. Home screen one of two. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold to Zero, zero, add button. So I had the button. One. He say one, cool. Two, three, four, five maximum reached. He say me the maximum is reached, cool. And five, for the five, same thing for remove. Four, three, two, one, zero, add button. Cool. Double tap to add. So my quantity is now accessible. Up. So I think we fix everything. Yes, well done, John. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cool, no? Yeah, cool. So let's recap all the best practices we've seen today before I lose my voice completely. So uh, first, content description, yes, but good content description, be brief. And you've seen in the state description also, we are brief because the user already know we are on the add button, so that we don't have to say the new quantity is two. Actually, blind user, they, they, they don't want that. They just want the, the information. No content description for decorative images. Texts are always are not always accessible. <laughs> uh, group elements together to facilitate navigation. Beware when you are overlapping layers in, in a scaffold or inbox. And if the state of your component change, you should inform the user. I have to take some pictures. <laughs> OK. And that's it for today. Uh, if you want to go further, the documentation, you know, all the documentation about Composite Good is really good. So you can find all the samples we shared with today on the, on the, on the Composer uh, uh, documentation. Yes. Uh, if you want to give us uh, some feedback, uh, it will be cool because we want to, we are interested to know if you appreciate this presentation. Uh, the, the QR code is still there. If you want to test the glasses, you can come back, come on stage when, uh, not, maybe not on stage, but you can come see us uh, to test it. And thank you. And please come to see us. <laughs>